Welcome to Story Path Showcase, where each week we get together and play a different uh, game in the Story Path system. 
Uh, this week we are once more visiting They Came from Beyond the Grave uh, with our the stunning conclusion of our feature film, uh, Near Dark on a Frightening Night. When last we met, uh, the heroes had, after facing down with the Countess a few times, uh, unsuccessfully, had slowly been lost to lose pretty much everyone that was close to Debbie to uh, vampirism. <laughs> um, uh, it's as though the Countess is like looking through your character sheet and finding people to, to turn. Um, after rescuing your boyfriend, um, you'll have to remind me, was it Brad or Chad? We just had a, a, a Chad Brad situation in uh, Camp Murder Lake. I think it was Chad. I think it was Chad, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. He's Chad now. Um, okay. <laughs> chalk it up to the high quality editing that you find in Pretty these uh, in these great- The actor left the set. <laughs> a Chad came on. It's just gonna be like a, a mannequin like wrapped up in a blanket and like gaffer taped shut um, <laughs> for the rest of the shoot. He's just, um, Anyway, you had uh, decided to use him as bait um, by setting him on the on the pitcher's mound at the baseball diamond, uh, surrounded by various wards and candles and and uh, some dueling uh, dueling mojo. I think it would be safe to say between the professor and uh, and Noon. Right? Is that is that fair to say? Um, and. Is, uh... And I covered it in with a blanket before I went. <laughs> uh, yeah, mildly bickering, maybe. Maybe that's what it was. Um, <laughs> and uh, we had, the last thing we had seen was, um, I believe she was orchestrating, correct me if I'm wrong, the Countess was, was uh, orchestrating Brad and your mother dancing. Is that right? Yeah, they were like floating. Floating in the air, dancing. And then uh, J Jackson, who was Jackson, the only person in the truck? I think I was there. I think we all just kind of pulled up and saw oh, You were all in the truck. Is, okay. So. Yeah. Right. We so Jackson, pieces, yeah. I think Jackson was planning on gunning it, just hitting the gas and going straight for that, uh, for that mound, right? I mean, it was a month ago, but that sounds right. That's fair. You, you're breaking the illusion. The audience at home doesn't know that it was a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it's on brand for Jackson. That's fair. I uh, appreciate it. Um, I'll make sure that... I'm on StoryPath Showcase. Right, exactly, yeah. Um, it was because Dr. Strange came out uh, between tapings. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, I blame Benedict Cumberbatch for pretty much everything. For everything. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you were going to gun it and, um, we will dive into what happens at that moment. Uh, just as soon as I double check with you all to see, do you have any, uh, tweaks that you wanted to make to your characters, uh, skill dot and attribute dot, uh, that you would like to move, um, anything along those lines? Um... I don't think so. No. I think I'm good. I, I would like to point out to the audience, this is the intensity at which a player looks at their sheet when they haven't had a session for a month. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Are we looking Are at me? again? Is everyone looking at each other? <laughs> I had a, like, plus one... Was it the bat or shears, I think? It was the, the bat gives you a plus one. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, I know you had the shears as well, um, which I believe also gave you a plus one. Oh, okay. So they're both, I could use either. Yeah. I don't know just... why I have holy padlocks written down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, weren't you doing spells? You were doing some spells that were like... Um... Containment. I like oh, no. padlocks. Maybe wasn't that like, like I felt tie like you were like useful. 
Yeah, I felt like you were like <laughs> casting like casual, like like you were casting a, a, a bunch of the same kind of spell. It was a real simple spell, and it was like there were there were there were rocks involved. <laughs> Crystal, I, yeah. I think the holy I think the holy padlocks was referring to you uh, doing some uh, magic on the bindings when you chained up uh, old boy, but I could be misremembering that. I think that was it. Bradwick yeah, that sounds better. Uh... All right, good. Now that we have all the important plot details in order. Um... <laughs> also, how we decided in the beginning of the session that it was Chad, and all of us have called him Brad since. I don't even know what you're <laughs> talking about, all this nonsense with Ted. So... Um... <laughs> So, <laughs> so as Jackson like like rings the steering wheel in his hand and there's like a close-up shot of him picking his foot up off the brake and just slamming it down on the gas and just as the car lurches forward uh you hear a wait 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 and the projectionist stops inside of the movie studio where the talent and the writers and their agents and the various folk are um, reviewing the the footage, reviewing the rough cut. Uh, I believe the professor's agent wanted to speak up. Is that accurate? That's correct. Yes. What would he like uh, to tell the writers' room? Well, frankly, uh, his the, the talent has express some concerns over the direction, uh, not, not capital D direction, but the angle in which the climax is going. Uh, he feels that there should be some dignity remaining in the, uh, the this feature and that um, a, a truck careening out of control towards the vampire is just too low brow for someone of his, his caliber. Um, plus he doesn't feel that he's got the spotlight to the extent that which he he desires, uh, or uh, rather his his compensation is not matching uh, correctly well, on this. Well, we so certainly can't pay him anymore. So, uh, what's the what's the pitch for this scene? Uh, the uh, the talent would like to uh, remove the the truck, have it stop at a, at a reasonable civilized distance, and then have the assembled group of hunters exit the vehicle uh, why, while he strides forth with his silver sword cane, reflecting the light to blind the vampires before, uh, as he put it, slicing and dicing them. Well, slicing and dicing sounds expensive, but um, uh -huh. I'll put it to the writer's room. What do we think of this scene change? Well, well he's I certainly not going to make more money than me. Nobody's getting any more money. I'm putting that just here. You'll, you'll be lucky if we have anything more than a pop tart at craft services. Oh, I'm sorry. There was one, there was one other element. Uh, oh, I'm sure there was. Continue. Yes. Um, he would he would like uh, uh, the character of Jackson to uh, fall to his knees and praise uh, the professor's prowess uh, after dispatching the vampires. Something suitable, uh, a, um, you know, I, I can't believe how fortunate I am to be uh, working with uh, a veteran uh, hunter as yourself. Um, something, something along those lines, uh, suitably funny. Point of interest, would he also like Jackson to, to work the balls a little bit? <laughs> uh, well, that can be in the cast reel, but uh, <laughs> we can discuss that later. Um, this is for the view in public, and he has a reputation to maintain. Mm. I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been gay for pay before. That's fine. I also, though, uh, <laughs> take a little issue uh, with characterization of a truck careening out of control. Uh, my character has complete control over the truck and knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, I don't think that that is really lowbrow. I think, if anything, it is a bold statement uh, moving into the third act. While that um, statement is, is heard and understood, uh, the, the talent feels that that is demeaning the film uh, to being a mere uh, 
generic action movie, whereas it feels that it can reach a slightly higher level of artistic quality and might help it reach an international audience. See the director I'm sitting across the room holding a script that the cover of the script is a yellow piece of paper that says script in black, black lettering on it. <laughs> yep. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate uh, where you're coming from. And, you know, I've been some places. I was almost nominated a few times, but I will also just point out that the character of Chad is currently being played by a bunch of sackcloth and a body bag with some electrical tape. So maybe our standards, we should maybe be a little uh, managed. Maybe your talent uh, should be informed of the context of the film uh, that is paying his rent. Careful editing can remove anything. Uh, angles can work wonders. Uh, I believe uh, the talent believes that numerous um, uh, cast members have taken advantage of angles in the past. Um, the director says, all right, how's this? We'll shoot it both. We'll work a little bit of both then. <laughs> well, hold on. I, I, have me, a vi I have a vision. What? Let me speak with the talent and just... Sure. Just go on the spot. See, the, tell me I'll even throw in an extra Pop-Tart. As um, long as the camera's on me, I don't really care. He, he returns. Figure uh, it out. The talent is willing to uh, agree to a slightly uh, lesser... Uh, alteration to the script great everybody in place we'll go we'll go get the reshoot wait, wait uh, he, he he's willing to go ahead with the the truck scene if he's set up to be a significant player in the sequel and that would be by by having the remain the well surviving uh, cast members um agree to work with him and his organization in any follow-up features that the characters would work, would um, join in with uh, the organization to which he belongs. I'm sure we can write that into a sequel. If that's acceptable with the rest of the cast, then, then the talent is willing to continue as uh, scripted. Any objections? We'll make sure we get plenty of rest on my ass. Let's shoot this. <laughs> we'll make sure we get plenty of, of, of beautiful shots of uh, of your reactions there. Uh, uh, was, was... I suppose that's fine. Debbie, yeah, that that's what, that's right. That was your name. Awesome, Debbie. You look you look great. You're doing a great job. Everybody places everybody. And we go back into scene. The car starts careening forward. The door flings open on the car. Uh, the professor steps out onto the side of the car, unscrewing his sword cane and leaving the, <laughs> the cane sort of just dangling along, like dropping along the, the field behind him. What would you like to do, professor? Uh, oh, well, I, I guess if, we, <laughs> if we're going to sideswipe, them, then he'll, yeah, he'll, he'll swing it. I guess the countess, if she's That's, reachable. So you're going to try to like hang out the side and hit the countess? Yeah, 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 let's right. like, um, let's go full on uh, action hero. Let's do it. Uh, go ahead and give me a um, that would be close combat and either dexterity or strength, depending on what you want to lean on. Do dexterity or dexterity or might, I should say. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, habits die hard. <laughs> right. Well, we'll stay with dexterity. Uh, just. Uh, oh, five. Nice. Five successes. Excellent. Um, so you come out and like swipe across like her, you get her like in the ribs. Um, and surprisingly enough, not only does it connect, but blood sort of just sprays forth out of the wound, uh, kind of showering the area. Um, you were going to try to get her with the truck, correct? Jackson? Yes. All right. 
Before that happens, though, we cut to Debbie's reaction shot. Debbie, give me a reaction shot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> check, check the gate. That was beautiful. All right. So um, that was great. you're going to. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, try to swipe through her basically like like as he's hitting with the sword, like you're swiping the, the car into her effectively, right? Uh-huh. Give me a, a pilot and dexterity, please. A what in dexterity? Pilot. Can I assist on this one? Can I like uh, grab the wheel for him? Sure, oh. yeah, you can like grab the wheel and help. <laughs> go ahead and you you go ahead and roll uh, pilot and dex as well, and then uh, you will add your successes as enhancement to his roll. What's the success again? Eights are better. Fuck nope. Nothing. Nothing. Oh well, that's not great. What'd you get on yours, Debbie? Hang yeah. on. I got one, two, we got two successes. <laughs> Excellent. So you managed to prevent uh, Jackson from, so like as the action starts back up, we go back into the same shot. Jackson starts peeling forward and the professor opens the door and Jackson goes, <laughs> it gives him like the full Bruce Willis. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Which I got a one on my roll too. I don't know if that counts for me. Ones only matter if you get no successes on the roll. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so that's just enough to distract him enough that he almost like winds up rolling the truck. But Debbie reaches over and like corrects him, um, and you are now back in control of the vehicle. Uh, Noon, you're the only one who hasn't gone yet. So what would you like to do? Oh, I uh, actually I had a question. Is the let us pray thing still? Uh, involved well, here? Prey is involved here. Would that help out at all? Or would that what, help at all? What are the bonuses that Let Us Pray provides, please? Uh, it gives you plus one, uh, depending on how many people prayed, it gives you plus enhancement. So if two people prayed, then it gives you one plus enhancement. And then oh, if three grants so, two plus. Yeah, you had three people praying. So yes, those enhan enhancements are in play, but you still have to get a material success to enhance. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Oof, outside of that, I really don't know what to add to this, to be honest. I'm sorry. I'll just throw some crystals at our face. Excellent. <laughs> um, give me a, uh, let's do, what is it, mysticism? Mysticism. That's a thing? <laughs> let's see. Let me, let me see the sheet. I might, be get, I might be thinking of the wrong. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't think, uh, I think you're thinking of. I'm probably thinking of uh, Cyclops' Steve. cave. Yeah. <laughs> Curses! <laughs> I can't help it. It's just what I think. It's what I think of when I think. Uh, so it would be uh, humanities or culture. Oh. And, de it. and dexterity, please. Dexterity. Okay, culture, and I'll do dexterity. And two successes. Excellent. Uh, you throw one of your crystals at her, uh -huh. and it flies right past her. No effect whatsoever. But the second crystal that, that you fly, that you, flies from your fingers, uh, hits her right in the forehead, and you hear like a sizzle, and she screams as her skin starts to pock and, and, and burn. It's not a lie! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my good. gosh i was having some eternal things there okay cool, thank you. <laughs> um that brings us to uh your friend and her friends um now that she's cut you see her face twist like she bends her head to the side and you see her jaw distend to about four times its natural size. Um, sharp fangs, probably about this long, come out of the top and bottom. 
uh, and her eyes turn like a deep, deep red. Clearly, she is unhappy. Oops. And she leaps forward toward the truck. And she's going to try to grab the truck, which is still moving. She picks the truck up and like drops it on the ground. <laughs> I need all of you to please roll stamina for me. Just stamina? Yeah, it'd just be a stamina roll. See if you can take it. Don't forget you do have the enhancements though, right? Because those enhancements from praying do everything, right? So what's the enhancements? Yeah. The let us pray. It affects everything for the rest of the scene. Sure. What do I account? How do I account for that? Oh, once you've rolled your dice, if you get a success, you add the enhancement to your total successes. Okay. I've got one plus the enhancement. I forget how much that is. And you said let us pray mm -hmm. works for the whole rest of the scene, right? I think so, yeah. So I got two successes plus the enhancement, right? Yep. Okay. So I got two successes. One of them was a 10. So that's three successes. Uh -huh. ten oh, I got a 10. Yep, 10 count as two. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's three. So it's six. So uh, the two of you, um, Jackson and Debbie, take no damage. Professor, you got one success? Yeah. All right, so you take one health level of damage or one injury. And how many did you get, Noon? None. None. All right. Uh, you take and a one and a one and a one. Um, <laughs> rewrite. There's. <laughs> I mean, if you have rewrites if you want to spend them, but if you don't, that's fine too. It's up to you. I'm interested to see where this is going. Let's, All right. Let's... You gain two rewrites for botching. Congratulations. So, Professor, um, you like roll off the side. Uh, of the truck but you're hit by the mirror as it like flies off the truck door it like catches you like right between the eyes um and your vision goes blurry for a second uh when you open your eyes you can see clearly that the truck has been flipped over onto its top um jackson and uh debbie are hanging upside down by their seat belts and you see that Noon was thrown clear of the vehicle out the driver's side. But you can clearly see uh, something is not quite right. She's not moving. Oh, like she seems to be struggling, but she's not getting any distance. And uh, Jackson, you have the perfect vantage point to see this. Debbie, you probably can't from where you're at. Um, as you look over and you see Noon trying to shimmy away from the car, and you see that the driver's door is about here on her. Ooh. So from here down, her hand is under the top of that car. <laughs> this is the face Jackson makes. <laughs> What are you looking at? <laughs> so, so Noon, you'll fill in five of the dots in your character sheet, which should put you on your second wound level. Okay. Uh, once that's active, you can get the bonuses that it lists there by taking another health level of damage. Okay. So how it'll show you, it says like a plus one archetype die, I think. Yeah. So you can, you can activate that and then you just take an extra health level of damage for pushing yourself. Oh, okay. All right. So that's her turn. Um, what would you like to do, Professor, since you have the initiative here? <laughs> what's, uh, what's the campus doing? Um, slowly floating to the ground, got her arms out, robe sort of draping. 
she goes, we could have just had a civil conversation and starts like walking toward the truck very slowly. Uh, walking towards Debbie. So the, the passenger side is still facing you. So she's walking towards Debbie. Um, has the truck happened to flip over in close proximity to any of the wards that uh, you put up over um, top noons? You're probably... The truck, the nose of the truck itself is probably 10 feet uh, from the pitcher's mound. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how much is in the rules. Can he try to use the pitcher's mound as a locus for the energies surrounding the baseball diamond? And sort of create, uh, you know, like a web, a webwork of uh, ley line like energy that would create a, a barrier to block, to stop the countess in her tracks from getting to the truck. Or is that like way out of proportion with what we can do? Here? What are your What are your cinematics that you have right now? Uh, like my tropes or my no, the, the actual cinematics that you. Oh, I believe you each had a list I gave you. No cinematics. Oh, um, Costume change, dramatic meteorology. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah those. Helpful yeah. haunt. I know him. I'm a serious uh, actor. Yeah, I don't think any of those would. All right. Here's what, it, here's what I will let you do. If, okay. you, if, if the writer's room agrees to spend three or your rights, I will say that you, have, you took the liberty while everybody else was prepping to go make arcane markings underneath the other bases that would allow you to make some attempt at this. Make some attempt. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. What does everyone, how does everyone feel? Well, for being wild and crazy, if you want to do it, go for it. I mean, yeah, man. This is the, uh, this is the end zone. Let's make it happen. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Plenty of time to mess this up. It's unanimous. You're down to three of your rights <laughs> in the pool, and I need you to go ahead and give me a, uh, it would be, um, it's your character, I believe it's humanities that you're leaning on? I believe on. so. Yeah. yeah, give me a humanities, and uh, we'll say uh, whichever uh, attribute you feel is best suited to um, the channeling of mystical energies. I guess resolve or something like that. Sure, yeah. Yeah, you are resolute. Mechanically, I would prefer cunning, but I can't quite see that. Hidden. So you'll do something cool and cinematic, like I mean, spin the sword cane. And... Cunning, I could, I could see an argument for cunning. You were quick enough oh. to not only think of this plan, but quick enough to think of it now, you know? Okay, yeah. All right, so let's, let's get that extra die there. Um, so he'll, you know, spin the, he'll yell out, you know, hold vial feed, uh, spin the sword cane, and then plunge it into the ground right on top of one of those. Uh, those lines to kind of Highlander like, you know, everything explode. And let's really hope that this role is semi successful. Uh, oh, okay. Three. Three? Yeah. And an eight and a 10. Plus the three enhancement from the Let Us Pray. Uh, ooh, wow. So that, that is like an immaculate success. That is amazing. So uh, you say, whole right. Vile Fiend, and you stomp you shoot the uh or shove the sword cane into the ground and there's like a crack of light that like zips up to to the pitcher's mound uh shoots out forming like a perfect pentacle from somehow a baseball diamond um the art doesn't quite line up right but <laughs> looks like somebody drew it on very hastily um before sending it to the film lab um but the light shoots upward and you see um debbie's mom chad uh debbie's best friend she's at the house though oh. what oh that's right she's in the house uh so De debbie's mom and i thought there was a third person that was there i could be wrong um no, you see Debbie's mom and Debbie's uh, boyfriend yeah. fall to the ground. Yeah. And then we cut away for a moment and we see back at the house as 
Debbie's best friend is fighting against her bonds. Cuts back, and you see um, Debbie's mom start to get up and, like, sh- like very, very shaky on her feet. Uh, but Brad stands up with her, and they both, their, their color has returned. Um, they seem to be breathing normally. They don't have the glassy look of domination over their face. You also see the countess like spin. So like she's standing pretty much directly between Debbie and uh, the professor. So you both get a very good shot of her spinning like as her skin starts to like twist and grow nodules and she just starts turning into this horrific monstrous version of herself. You see like bones starting to crack. She starts moving like every third frame is edited out and uh, she grows about a foot taller. Oh, I wonder when David's all dust. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to Jackson. What would you like to do? Well, what is the scene? The scene is I'm hanging by my seatbelt. Yes. Noon is uh, trapped from far forearm up by the truck. Yes. Uh, Debbie is hanging next to me. Yes. I have a, what I imagine is now a six foot fiend uh, walking towards me. Uh, the fiend seems to have turned its back on you. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, because we have now engaged uh, the relationship between Jackson and Noon, because this is, it's horror, it's horrific. Uh, that's just like a lot. Like your arm just ends at the forearm and then it's all truck. It's just <laughs> elbow and then truck. That is, not, that's not that fucking like okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, Jackson is gonna cut himself down or like just click. Maybe it's just right. a click. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Plotted knife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check on Debbie. Is like, are, are you okay? Are you all right? Do you need to get out? Can you get out of here? I can get out. Don't worry about me. All right, great. Uh, Jackson's gonna crawl out of the side of the truck uh, and go over to noon. And well, there's not noon. really any going over to noon. Like you're okay. gonna have to crawl over noon to get out. <laughs> like her. Like oh, she's I'm on the driver's face side. To face with you. Yeah. <laughs> we both in the driver's side together, basically. Yes. Okay, except she's on the wrong side. So, all right. So I'm going to look over to noon now that I have fallen to the roof of the car or the side of the car, uh, all weird, uh, and ask, so, <laughs> and check on noon. Are you in shock? Are you freaking out? Are you in pain? Are you screaming? Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. Shock is a hell of a thing. Like I'm, I'm cool as a cucumber. <laughs> All right. So I need you to Something know. Something happened. Yeah, yeah it's fine, I right? Just, yeah. I just need to know because you're kind of into some spooky shit. Um, thermodynamics, right? Heat, hot things, um, or blood things. Uh, we need to get you away from this car and we're going to have to take something off of you uh, in order okay. to make it happen. Uh, but I'm afraid that if I do that, you're going to bleed out in this baseball diamond. Um, but you were also kind of magic. So I mean, got something in your spooky bag. The engine's still hot. I could just, right? Like after you cut it off, just... <laughs> that is true. The engine is still hot. And then Jackson is going to kind of climb over noon and like kind of root through the back of the truck looking for a machete or an axe of some, of some kind. <laughs> I think it should be an axe. Uh, uh, I was going to say like, uh, I'm open to axe, but allow me to pitch you an a, a, a alternative. What if it's like a machete that's like serrated? Yeah. <laughs> so Jackson, <laughs> Jackson goes and grabs his serrated machete and then he goes in front and kind of like pops the hood 
just to get ready. And then he goes over to Newton. He takes off his belt. And he puts it, he folds it. He oh goes over to Noon. This is starting so, to get real. <laughs> listen, I know you feel all right now, but it'll make me feel better if you just bite down on this. Uh huh. <laughs> and then Jackson goes just, just full hip movement, trying to get a clean shot and just whoop, down on the arm. Doesn't quite get through the bone. And has to just saw a few, like three or four. <laughs> just, <laughs> he's really trying to get through as fast as he can. Uh, but and he's he's a strong dude, but still. Give me so uh, gets... give me a might plus medicine roll real quick, just to see how long this does actually take you. Uh, okay, I think we're gonna be. I think we're gonna be okay, noon. One, two, three, four. I don't, I don't think I got nothing on medicine, but my might is strong. I don't got shit on medicine, but my might is strong. Okay. Hold on. How many of these? Are... There we go. Roll. Okay. Fuck. We have one success. <laughs> no. But your description is beautiful, so I'm going to give you a rewrite. And you have the three enhancement from the... Um... Let us pray. Let us pray. Yeah. All right. So it only takes you two rounds to cut her hand off. Um, you start like just screaming, bleeding. Um, I need you to roll stamina for me, please. Oh, fuck this. I pass out by now, I feel like. Stamina. Where are you at, stamina? Exactly my question. Okay. <clears throat> One success. Excellent. You remain conscious. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Yep. Uh, you can fill that health line that you're at right now mm -hmm. completely up with dots and then put one dot in your next health line. Okay. Which puts you at that'll leave a scar. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Uh, it will. Absolutely. And it's that will eat up. <laughs> I wish I was at that point. <laughs> and that will eat up your next two turns, the two of you, as you're sawing your hand off. So, uh, Debbie, what are you doing in light of all of this happening? Uh, um, well, I wanted to use, I'll take my leave to get out of the truck. Excellent. What does that do? Um, I don't really remember. <laughs> is that a, a quip cinematic? It is. Oh my gosh. It's attached to pilot. I guess it's oh. like getting places so. yes that's generally using the i'll take my leave that's the trademark so you can activate that if you want um i would assume that would be tied to your roller skates yeah so excellent so you don't you like unbuckle and like bend your knees up to either side of your cheeks and put your like put the nose like the front wheels of the roller blades on the lip of the door and like eject yourself out, like spinning midair and like land rolling straight toward the uh, the countess. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. So I want to like really book it towards her and grab some sand and then throw some sand in her eyes. Excellent. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, let's do aim and dexterity. And you can have plus two enhancement because you did activate that uh, that trademark. Or I'm sorry, plus two dice because you activated the trademark. Plus two dice? Yep. No, I'm doubting myself. One, two, three. Um, so I got a 10 and an eight and an eight. Excellent. So that's four successes. So um, as you whip this sand in your face, you see that when it hits, it's still like sparkling with some of that magical energy. Um, and it like burns her eyes. And she like 
looks at you through like blood running down her cheeks and she goes, I'm going to wear your skull as a hat and dives forward at you. Ooh. Can I like do a fancy uh, roller skate move to get out of the way? <laughs> Well, if you I leave again, if, no, if you had uh, saved part of your action, like you can split actions, but if once you act, you basically get to try to take it. That's kind of what your options are. Oh, I thought and she would be blind. There is no, I mean, she is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she is going to be dealing with some complications on this attack for sure. Okay. But she is going to negate two of them. Uh, with scale. Okay. Uh, she lunges toward you. And it's almost like comedically poorly aligned with where you are actually standing. Like she just lunges super wide, um, winds up biffing, eating dirt, probably 30 feet away from you. Um, she's snarling and swearing and, and cursing up a storm as she slowly rises to her feet. And that brings us to the top of the next round, Professor. I'll say, uh, oh, I'll oh. say if you can catch me. <laughs> nice. Is that a quip? No, um, I just bollocks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, it should be. Um, excellent. Uh, so that brings us to the top of the next round. Professor, what would you like to do? Uh, okay. I guess this is going to be a, an academic of action and, uh, and dive in here. Uh, yellow is something, oh, I wish I could do something suitable right now. My brain's a bit fried. Um, so he'll just strongly and silently uh, you know run forward uh, stabbing at uh, at the countess uh, or just with a with a roar of some sort excellent so you just let out like a roar and straight forward excellent um go ahead and give me a uh, close combat and uh, whatever attribute you feel is going to be most in, at play here um, all right uh, you will have two enhancement because she is effectively blind. Uh, so then that's uh, two successes, so four. Excellent. Um, you drive the sword into her back. Okay. Um, she kind of stands up again, swaying, uh, but with the sword still in her. Now, it does not break your grip, but she still absolutely has the sword like through her torso at the moment. And that will bring us back around to Debbie, what you got. Ooh. Um, uh, so she missed me. Now she's standing up with a sword with her? The sword is sticking in like her back out her stomach. Okay. So like the professor ran up and stabbed her through the back and he's still holding on to the hilt of the sword as she starts to stand up facing you. I'll take out my stake and try to make a move towards her heart. Excellent. Uh, Rollerblading real fast. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, go ahead and uh, you can either use close combat or pilot, whichever you prefer. Um, and then uh, I would say probably either dex or might, but any attribute that you think is reasonable here. Is that plus enhancement? Uh, you don't roll the enhancement, but yes, your enhancement would apply. So now you would you would have five enhancement on this roll because you got it from the... Um, the trademark and from or no it'd be three enhancement plus two dice oh plus two dice to my yep so it'd be your pilot and dexterity or pilot and might plus two dice and then you'd get three enhancement in the roll 
So I rolled it without the the two dice, and I got two tens and an eight, and now I'll roll two dice. Nice. Nothing on those two, so two tens and an eight. That's fine. Um, you, that's still five successes, six successes. So you uh, dive forward and plunge the stake into her chest. Um, as you do, like her chest starts to glow and then the like wood catches fire and you back up and you can see like bit by bit particulate matter as she starts to just turn to ash sort of in this sweeping pattern from where the stake hit and her body just starts to sort of disintegrate blowing away into the wind uh, as she falls into a pile of nothingness and, and is destroyed. Did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> and then at that exact moment, you hear ka chunk. He <laughs> 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 looks over. <laughs> There's blood just gushing out everywhere out of your wrist. Um, what would you like to do about that? Talking to me? Any of you, any of you at all. I mean, I really should. I, I it occurs to me now that I really should have tourniqueted this shit before I went into it. Peter that all. Yeah. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> you you really should have. I need all of you to roll uh, integrity and cunning for me, please. <laughs> Uh, this is, mm. this is a bad look. How do I have no integrity? <laughs> do you really have to ask that question? I got two ones. I mean, I'm, I still do the, I fight the good fight, God damn it. Nice. You got two ones, so you totally botched. That's two more rewrites to the rewrite pool, so now you're up to uh, six, I think. Um, and, success. like, you can hear, like, the like the That's swelling impressive. orchestral music of the of of you have won and like this is we're about to transition to the happy cut, cut anytime now uh you have a complication of four uh noon due to the fact that you're bleeding out of your like used to be in a hand mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i got one success <laughs> are you gonna spend any of that buying off the complication or are you just going to just oh, the rewrite? No, no 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 the well, i mean you can you spend a rewrite to re-roll the dice that you that you fail. Oh, that, I guess. Uh, can can I? Yeah. Right. Use a rewrite to. Yep. Okay. So let's let's try that one. That one sucked. Uh, yeah, nothing. No, oh, excellent. Yeah, you notice you're bleeding. Cool. Um, Jackson. Yes. You look over and you for some reason you can't. How many successes did you get? Two. I got two, and I have a question about tropes. Yes. How do you use them? Um, it depends on the trope. The, the, the rules are all listed in the book. Uh, so if you go to your well, archetype. I have, a trope. I have a trope that's fate inexplicably smiles. Oh, sure. Do you know what, what if that's from your archetype? It is. Okay. Um, and how many successes did you get, Professor? Sorry? One. One? Okay. Um, so you notice the blood that's spraying forth from uh, the other side of the car. Uh, looks like there's not as much blood on the ground as there is landing on the ground. Um, Jackson, you absolutely notice that it looks to you as if the ground is drinking the blood. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. And which, what was the trope again? Fate inexplicably smiles. Fate inexplicably smiles. And if I notice that the ground is drinking the blood, I will also use a quip and oh. say, no, don't say it. 
<laughs> Very good. You'll have another enhancement for the remainder of the scene. Um, once per story, you may ask the director for inexplicably good luck. A locked door opens when you try it. Uh, you find the escape hatch in the monster's cellar. Uh, you find just enough cash in your pockets to pay the fare back to the village or something similar. Do you have a good luck request? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm like new not to bleed out. Oh, I mean, that's fair. You want to spend that for noon not to bleed out? Like, that's what you want to spend this on? All right. <laughs> sure. Um, you realize that you have a choice now. You can either, uh, you know, you got to stop this blood from getting on the ground. So you pull the belt out of Noon's mouth where it's really kind of more just like hanging around her neck at this point. You pull uh -huh. it off and you like tourniquet the edge of the, of the wound. Uh -huh. um, and that stops the bleeding. Uh, but you all start to hear a rumble and like feel a rumble. That's what you'd like to spend this on, he said. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Third base flips over. Mm. Mm -hmm. Second like base received. flips over. Uh, Chad starts dragging your mom off of the side of the um, baseball diamond. Just as they cross home plate, home plate flips over. Just when they're on the other side of it. And you see each of the bases where the professor had written those symbols underneath are now like the symbols are now filling with blood. This is what happens when you involve crystals. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Instead of good old fashioned magic. Uh, Chad, mom, are you okay? We're fine, sweetie. I'll, I'll save you. He runs forward and as he comes like at the same, like as he comes parallel to the base, he just like hits nothing and falls back on his ass. What was that? It's like some kind of force field. <laughs> the top, like the actual rectangular piece of like material that is the pitcher's mound blows off the top of it in a shower of gore. Uh, just a geyser of blood shooting about 30 feet into the air. And now, naked, fully reborn, glistening skin, flying up out of this geyser of blood is a rejuvenated and completely healed countess. <laughs> I looked at Malachi in the dark. Like, what happened? I thought I did... <laughs> What is this? Spell I cast. <laughs> the blood rejuvenated me. The blood. <laughs> and as she does that, uh, Professor, what would you like to do? I don't know. Um... <laughs> I'm dead air here for a minute. Um... If you'd like to reserve your action, you may pass along focus to another member of your party. Let's pass think. along focus while I think. Excellent. Who would yeah. anyone like to seize focus? I want to see uh, well, Malachi in action here. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Yeah. Vampire Slayer. That's fine because Noon isn't bleeding no more. And uh, Jackson just wants to kill some shit real bad. Uh, so, but hold on. There's. There's there's definitely a trope for this, or a trademark. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, so all right. So what happened is the countess countess shoots up from third base, uh, a la Johnny Depp in Friday the Thirteenth. Right. Um, no, no, nightmare on Street. But yeah, it's, it's very much the Johnny Depp. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, except okay. it's a pitcher's mound instead of a, of a mattress. Okay. Uh, and Noon is like, 
fine ish. She's not actively free bleeding out of her arm at the moment. Great. That's uh, as much as Jackson is concerned. Like I've fixed this as much. As <laughs> this is great. good enough. Walk it off. You'll be fine. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. Fuck it. Really? Uh, Jackson uh, in Jackson's world, anything can be a weapon. Um, and he's going to take his serrated machete. Which would be a weapon, yes. Which would be a weapon. Um, run at the Countess. Uh, and he's not so much going to try and like jump and swing because like this is obviously a dangerous situation he wants to keep a little bit of distance from. But he is going to like stop short and just chuck this at her neck. Excellent. Uh, so you come running out and uh, like get mad air off the top of your car so that you're basically like eye level with her for a second and just let it whip. Give me an aim and might. All right. And you're at four enhancement, I believe. Oh, man. My sheet is doing all kinds of weird things. Hold on. Sure. Okay. Is it nighttime? It's nighttime. It's game, right? It's just it is nighttime. Song. Yeah, I assume. Such. Yeah, it would be a very different scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Because I have aim and might. I have so much aim and might. I had to roll six dice to make this happen. And I, and what's a success? Eight, nine, or ten. You got gotcha. nine. I got one nine. I got two ones. All right. Well, that's okay. One nine counts. Uh, right. So you get uh, you have a four enhancement in total. So you whip this thing and catch her dead in the chest. It's a little lower than I would have liked, but that's fine. Um, it bounces off. <laughs> Seemingly harmlessly. <clears throat> it lands in the ground in front of her. Great. Uh, Professor, would you like to reclaim focus? No. Excellent. Uh, De <laughs> Debbie, what would you like to do? Um, seeing uh, noon, like kind of just laying on the ground. I think she would be like, we need to get you up. We need your help. And then she'll she'll grab her and take her to the car engine and, you know, cauterize. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you drag her over the car engine. Uh, I need you to roll... Um, I don't know what it would be. I need you to roll. I got resolve and medicine. resolve and medicine. Yeah, probably. Right, because that's a that's a messed up thing to do to another human being. Um, <laughs> well, I'm and, trying to help. And I need yeah. you to roll resolve or might. Which one would you like to rely on? Noon. Yeah. Oh, uh, I shall go with might. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, noon is like. Oh, I'm a participant in cauterizing my wound. <laughs> two successes. I got two ones. <laughs> no successes. Oof. Well. <laughs> um, I don't know what you can do. You shove the stump into the engine. Are you... So you've rolled might. Noon, you hold on. You hold your place. You don't let her pull you into the engine. But your hand, your arm is really slick and bloody. Um, and so, Debbie, you slip. 
into the engine. And you discover two things. One, probably not hot enough to cauterize the wound. Two, um, doesn't make it hurt less when you like, you ever jam your fingers playing basketball? Like you just did that with both hands, like full <laughs> strength. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, I got an idea. <laughs> I got an idea. Okay, I'm gonna spend a rewrite. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, wait a second, I'm not a doctor, but I know who is. <laughs> Dr. Leopold, I know him. <laughs> let you do that for one rewrite absolutely as long as everybody's okay with that that's uh -huh. fine. <laughs> i'll just drag her to dr leopold while like you know hey, i'm taking take, wherever we go i'm taking my hand with me just oh to... uh, you can't get to your hand i can't get to my hand i was under the thing damn yeah it's like under the roof of the car so the the truck flipped over onto its roof oh i thought it was a door okay no no gotcha. no yeah no nothing that easy i miss a hand already <laughs> um, all right uh dr leopold focus returns to you she comes over dr leopold like pointing like this i, I know you're not that kind of doctor but please i wish you were why didn't you take medicine <laughs> i only un un studied a rudimentary amount to know what to it do doesn't blood matter help uh, fine and he'll uh Draw on some knowledge of uh, summoning a, a salamander uh, sprite to breathe a gout of fire to cauterize the wound or something to that effect. <laughs> some some uh, delightfully hermetic um, spell involving fire elementals. Excellent. Uh, you... On a minor level. Not pull out a stick. Kill a vampire. You pull out a stick and start, like, drawing a seal of Solomon on the, in the dirt and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just slow your bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> sorry, suck it in. Uh, are you doing anything then? I'm just going with the flow at the moment. I don't think I have braid blood. You're slowing your bleeding, right? Yeah, yeah. That's um, what I'm doing because you see Part the you, you see the countess lunge out of the the shower of blood. Directly toward Jackson. I saw that. Yep. Oh. Um, I mean, what am I supposed to do? I'm getting <laughs> healed right now. <laughs> I'm just letting you I'm know. You can do whatever under. you can do whatever you want with that information. I'm just sharing it. You, would, um, you know what? I'm just know. I'm just gonna really lazily just pick up a rock and then throw it in that general direction. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, go ahead. And Not roll. even a magic rock. Just a rock you find. Uh, <laughs> some gravel from the baseball. Just some gravel, like little pebbles. <laughs> uh, go ahead and, and roll uh, athletics and might uh, with a complication of two. Uh, if you do not resolve this complication, you will hit someone other than your intended target with these stones. I mean, I got two successes. Yeah, I'll be okay if it was me. All right. So you cannot. <laughs> Resolve the complication if you wanted to hit her with them, but also hit someone who's not her. Or you can. Oh, just... do I count my? Oh, yeah. Do I count the prayer thing too? Is that oh, yeah. You get the enhancement still. So, yeah, you can buy off the complication, still hit her with the stones. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be great. I would love to do that. All right. Uh, you hit her, the stones bounce off seemingly harmlessly. Tomorrow. <laughs> Those were stones that you did not bless. You're not, you don't believe in the power of rocks. You believe in the power of crystals. Um, I'm a rockyologist. Uh, half a second I'm here. Saying, I'm just saying, brother got a whole doctorate in spooky shit to fight <laughs> demons. It didn't take one EMT class. The nerve. We have people who do that for us. Jackson, you have not acted yet this turn, right? Am, am I correct? And no, you did. You, you, you th you, no, you threw the, threw the thing. thing. Yeah. He hasn't acted yet. So yeah, you have. You've. So you just get to take it. Uh, go ahead and roll your um, stamina, please. Yes. Yes. Fine. 
That being said, I would also like to invoke the odds are against us. Which yeah. does? Trademarks. And I just have that, and then in parentheses, stamina. Oh, excellent. Yeah, all right. So you get uh, two extra dice on this roll, because... Two extra dice. So I have my usual stamina, which is three, four, five. Okay. Ooh, baby. All right. Two eights and a ten. So is that four? Uh, yes. And your enhancement of three. So that is an award, or that's an award winning trademark. So you may seize directorial control over the scene. Um, oh, you can add something, you can take something away, you can uh, do a time shift, you can alter things uh, in a way a director might. So right now she's trying to grab you and sink her teeth into you. Sure. Right now that's what she's doing. Her teeth into a tire. <laughs> well, okay. So but the 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 broad picture, right? What's happening behind me is noon sees what's going on, throws some rocks towards me. But while noon is seeing what's going on, uh She's also being tended to by a fake doctor uh, and a roller girl. Yes. Right. That's that's what's happening. Salamander. <laughs> and the countess is lunging towards me. And I have directorial control. Uh, what is it? What is the scope of that? Oh well, allow me to read it to you from the book. Actually, if you all don't mind, let's take our, our tech break and then I will read it to you from the book. Beautiful. All right, we'll be back momentarily. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We have returned from our break. You blinked and we were back. It's magic of editing. Um, so we we're going to discuss directorial control, right? Uh, yeah, what's the scope? Um, with directorial control, you can alter the story directly, adding or subtracting details from the scene. Each extra success on a roll enhanced by your trademark may alter one detail. The past cannot be changed. A slasher's bloody axe can't vanish as though it had never been there, but it may become hopelessly lodged in a tree trunk. The change must make sense within the story, but may be quite improbable. A list of examples are the first book you grab has valuable information. Uh, the police officer you're trying to convince has seen weird and inexplicable things before. The key to the haunted house's door is under the welcome mat. Uh, one of the monsters still has a spark of humanity remaining. Uh, the blindings on the, on the sacrificial victim's wrists come loose, allowing escape. Um, the sight of the creatures instantly sobers the town drunk who pours out his final drink. Uh, the court on the protective charm phrase exposing the witch to the creature's wrath. Things like that. So, like, you know. So, here's my question. Can something have happened that the audience hadn't seen? Yeah, Absolutely. So what I really want to happen is I want Jackson to, uh, at some point when the camera was not on him and he realized that the Countess was coming back, um, took, injected, ingested uh, some sort of uh, garlic silver tincture that would make his blood toxic. Okay. All right. And then, and then, to allow himself to be attacked by the Countess. Excellent. So, she jumps, catches you by the neck, sinks her fangs in, and you see her fangs, a close-up on her fangs as her fangs turn to ash. And she backs away, spitting ashes out of her mouth. What did you do? Her skin starts to like crack again and turn all, you know, nodules popping out and scaly and dry again. Um, so she goes back to kind of her second uh, monstrous form after that assault upon her. Beautiful. That brings us back to the top of the order. So, uh, Professor, 
Uh, have I finished cauterizing Noon's wound? Um, yes, you have drawn a seal of Solomon and then you've taken uh, some flint out of your pocket and like hit it against the stick in the middle of the seal of Solomon and uh, created a small campfire, which you then stuck your hand in. Um, your wound is cauterized, yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I knew you could do it. In my head, Dr. Leopold sprung a Boy Scout uniform. <laughs> Well, we have costume change, don't we? The... <laughs> it's just, the, it's the same, like, professor outfit, but just with, like, an Eagle Scout, like, bandolier on it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Smokey the Bear cauterizing a wound. <laughs> You're correct. Uh, I'm not that kind of doctor that he opens his vest and there's all these merit badges. <laughs> I am this type of voice <laughs> So now that you've successfully cauterized the wound, what would you like to do? Uh, okay. Um, is any geez, anything about uh, uh, anything like can, she's floating in the air, right? Yeah. Still, any way to ground her? Um, ideally, next to the truck. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, I mean, again, can he? If there's anything, some you magic can, out of his hat. Uh, magic, probably not. But you, uh, yeah. you might have a, a rope or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Sure. Oh, a silver I, I chain just, of some sort. Yeah, you might. Have, yes, you have silver chains in there. Absolutely. So All you right. can try to like lasso so, her around the ankle. <laughs> Excellent. You pull out like a, like, like you pull out a silver chain at first, but then it cuts to a wide shot and you have like a, like a rodeo lasso made out of silver chain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go ahead and give me a uh, aim and uh, dexterity if you don't mind. Aim and dexterity. Oh no. <laughs> Not that kind of thing. Um, all right. Oh, still got good dicks. Uh, oh, I have very good dexterity. Four successes. That's Excellent. Two nines. Excellent. You get her around both ankles and like run her over and like tie the other end to the uh, open door of the car. She is now. Rodeo is my second best best <laughs> merit. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you may have another ray rate for the re rate pool. Uh, uh, focus shifts uh, back to um, Debbie. What would you like to do? Um, I'll just be like, <clears throat> Noon, you okay now? Uh, you conscious? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Great. Thanks. Thanks. Just Love like you falling over. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Everybody take five. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> um, um, so the Countess is on the ground now? Ground. Uh, the Countess is tied by her ankles and a 30-foot long silver chain to the uh, flipped over car. Uh, you can also now see, all of you can see that blood is like coming up out of these uh, these invisible ley lines like blood is like shooting up out of them all as well creating effectively like a blood arena that you're all trapped in mm. so there is no escape as far as you can tell just walls of blood around you all right so i'll grab from the trunk i'll just like skate over to the trunk and then grab my um like pliers oh your, your snips clippers yeah. yep and um try to like put the clippers on her neck and you know close it so you look over and you <laughs> see that there are the hand clippers and you look up and she's like 30 feet up but then you look and you see there's also like a tree limb the hedge clipper thing. yeah <laughs> like with the extended like 10 foot arm <laughs> 
Hmm. Which one? Do I <laughs> I'll grab so the hedge clipper. <laughs> you pick that up and bring it over and start trying to prune her. Um, go ahead and give me a, a uh, close combat and dexterity, I guess that would be. Excellent. Oh, no. I got 110. That's two successes. Uh, you slice into her neck. Um, and you see the shears start to bend a little bit at first. And then, like, it pops through almost like if you imagine, like, if you've ever cut a bratwurst that wasn't quite done. So it sort of like bends a little bit. The skin like bends a little bit first before it pops. Uh, that kind of happens on both sides of her neck uh, as blood just sort of starts showering you um, and your immediate vicinity. Uh, still keep squeezing? Yeah, I'll we'll just keep it there. Keep her head there. Just bear my weight down on it. <laughs> Jackson! <laughs> Uh, no, you're right, Queen. Oh, <laughs> While Jackson is uh, taking a half of initiative take to, to lose his shit, uh, what would Noon like to do with focus? <laughs> um, I kind of want to hold my, my turn. Okay. That's cool. All right, absolutely. Um, what do you got, uh, Jackson? So where, where, where did my machete fall? Um, it's on the ground, like between Debbie and the and the professor. Okay, and and Debbie is currently just being showered with blood as she's trying to cut she off the head. Of shout, me. yeah, like you look over, and at first she's like ah, and then she's like leaning on the handles, trying to like get it to cut the rest of the way off, and then uh -huh. like you lean over for a second, and there's like some like slow jams playing, and like the blood's mm -hmm. flowing like slow motion through her hair. <laughs> Jackson, help. <laughs> what was the song, Travis? What was the song? Oh, uh, Bad oh. Medicine? No, the other one. The other one. Oh, your sister. <laughs> oh, Cradle Sister. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly, yes. The... Absolutely. So Jackson... Uh, stands stands up from wherever he is, uh, in slow motion, as "Cry Little Sister" plays, uh, as blood just breezes through Debbie's. <laughs> no takes <laughs> takes from the hero stance, gets up grabs in motion his machete and then runs over to the countess and tries to finish the job in a swoop. All right. So you run up and you like parkour off the top of your truck. Um, uh -huh. Very slow motion, very like, you know, uh, like Legion, you know, when the angels like flying with the machine gun and it's all slow-mo. And so like that kind of a shot, uh, go ahead and give me a uh, close combat and might roll. All right. I'd watch this movie just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This do not fail me. I am really good at these two things and these two things alone. Okay. Is an, an A is a success? Yes. Are you shitting me? I mean, it's fine. It's two successes. But what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I had seven dice and I got two successes. It's fine. All right. So uh, you come down on her neck and you like split half of her head, like half of her neck splits wider and the uh, clippers clamp down closer and it cuts off enough of her head that her head is like lolling sort of just held together more by flesh than bone or throat at this point 
but it is still being held on, and therefore she still uh, is among the undead as focus shifts back to her. Um, she is going to try to uh, stick her hand down your throat, Jackson. <laughs> All right. All right. That, that uh, seems... Roll stamina, please. Oh, I will so... I will so roll stamina. I have one success. Excellent. You take uh, five boxes of damage. As she grabs, she doesn't quite get her hand down your throat, but she grabs your lower jaw and then just rattles you around for a minute uh, before she drops you. And you hear like things like cracking and snapping and you hear a little oh. bit of ripping, some teeth come oh. out. Like, oh. <laughs> and she oh. drops you on the ground. And then Jackson just sort of, he, what he's trying to say is not the face, but he just comes out of, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Excellent. And focus shifts back to the professor as Jackson hits the ground uh, in a shower of blood and teeth. Uh, is her neck still, like, I guess, stuck between some blades then? The ones that Debbie's holding? And... So if you'd imagine, like, the the esophagus kind of resembles a turkey gobble at this point, which is really mm -hmm. what uh, Debbie has a hold of. Is she has sort of, it's not so much cutting anymore as she has a good solid grasp on the turkey gobble that is her esophagus. Uh, her head is just lolled loosely to the side. So she's kind of looking at the world upside down. We'll give her a complication for that. Uh, right now, at this point, Debbie full on looks like just like a go go dancer from a My Life with the Thrill Kill cult video. She's just completely <laughs> covered in blood at this point. Uh, pure, like it's just. It's it's blood and gore and sex on wheels. And I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Noon is just laying on the ground, staring upward. <laughs> <laughs> Responsive, though. Responsive. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The pupils are reacting. But the hamster is dead. <laughs> the lights are on, but you're not sure anyone is home at the moment. Uh, when the truck was flipped, was there any indication that like the undercarriage was damaged or the engine was damaged, or was it just flipped? No, it just flipped. Yeah, there's no like it still runs. It's so gonna uh gonna fasten the other end of the chain to one of the uh one of the wheels. Okay. Um, in, in sort of as much as as tight and um, as tight as possible, so then try to uh, gun the engine. Give me a uh, pilot and whatever uh, whatever you would like to rely on attribute. Okay, with. pilot. Uh, no. um, cunning or dexterity. Either one's fine by me. All right, let's do that. something eight one success excellent plus you have the enhancement Three so successes. the professor gets up runs over grabs the chain and like goes around the rear wheel and like ties some of the slack around the like the drive shaft and then just reaches in and leans on the gas as hard as he can <laughs> you see her just get pulled underneath and she starts screaming her head off. As you can see where her, uh, actually I guess it'd be this side of her face because it's hanging off this way, is banging against the um, exhaust and like burning away and like burning to ash as it's hitting, but it's, she's still up. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. I would have, I would have me, I guess. <laughs> I was hoping that maybe like, uh, there'd be sort of extra peripheral damage from the, the shears that Debbie had, right? So she's yanked down. Uh, she's in terrible shape right now. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah, she is not, like, half of her head is burned off. The other half is l loosely hanging on by a flap of skin. Um, and she just keeps banging into the side of it because you've just laid on the gas. Uh, and so it cuts over to Debbie as focus shifts. 
And it cuts, despite the lingering shot on this horrible tragedy of her head banging against the thing, when it cuts over to Debbie, the the blood just keeps flowing for like a, a, another second or two longer than it probably should before like, yeah. it, it slowly turns off. Not like it was moved away. <laughs> Like some so like, PA was like very much from her eyes, you know. <laughs> right, of course, yeah. You you clear the blood from your eyes and look over and see this uh, happening. What would you like to do? Oh my God! What should I do, Doctor Jackson? I'm like l- looking in my pockets. I find like the old crystal that um <laughs> noon gave. <laughs> 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 Oh, excellent. Let's give it a try, you know? (laughs) She'll go to where the countess is and be like, I don't know. I guess she'll like press it against her forehead. Okay. Power Uh, of Christ compels you. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) You press it against her forehead and say, The power of Christ compels you. Um, (laughs) And like you see light start emanating from the crystal and in the crystal you can see sort of like really poorly overlaid uh like we're talking like uh more like film burned over the top of the crystal you see like um you sitting at the lookout point with chad and then chad being like i don't know babe i'm not feeling so hot maybe we should go and then him dropping you off and then a shot of you two kissing and then him turning into a vampire and then him turning back from being a vampire and then uh, him being bouncing impotently off the side of the cage, the, the blood cage that you're in, uh, before it goes white and light shoots out of the... Uh, <laughs> the editor's like, I'm sorry, that's their relationship. That's what we have. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, as bright light shoots out of the crystal and uh, the countess catches fire and she goes, I lay a curse upon you. A curse. My minions will eat your soul. And then she just bursts into a column of flame and dissipates into nothingness. The prison walls drop down. The blood walls drop down. Okay, I'm ready to fight. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Noon sits up ready to fight. You look over Noon, and the first thing you see when you sit up is Jackson going, (laughs) I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) Chad runs in and like grabs Debbie and like goes in to kiss her, but then like stops and like like wipes her face off (laughs) (laughs) oh chad i love you so much yeah me too babe are you okay reasonably that's that's fair it has been quite a day or a night (laughs) Uh, uh. he looks over at Jackson. Oh my God! And he like throws up. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, you look like you just got into a fight with like Mike Tyson and George Foreman at the same time. Like your face is just like your jaw is kind of like the bottom of your jaw is kind of over here uh, uh, as, you, as you stand up and like stumble the to the griddle guy. <laughs> yes, the griddle guy. Uh, <laughs> Known, known the world over for his griddles. Um, mm. He is known the world over for his griddles now, but uh, and for naming his first seven children George. Um, Back. George. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Jackson, what would you like to do with your uh, busted jaw? Not have a busted jaw. Um, well, I mean, you're a action star in a horror film. You can fix that, right? Sure. Yeah, exactly. And so what Jackson does is just take his... Simultaneously, he reaches into his back pocket and also takes his left hand and just 
shoves his jaw back into place <laughs> and pulls out a bandana <laughs> and just kind of ties it over and then puts on a trucker hat on top of it and just <laughs> All right, I'll walk, I'll walk it off. <laughs> Give me a might and medicine roll, please. Sure. <laughs> what do I have here? I know I don't got medicine. Two successes. Hey. All right, you pop your jaw in a place enough that you can talk now. Amazing. I love that. It's my favorite thing. As you all get to your feet and gather in the center of this baseball diamond and the sun starts to just paint the first lights in, in the morning sky, any final words or last things you would like to say or do? I'm just going to be holding uh, Chad and like kissing him, but also kind of looking over at Jackson to see his reaction. <laughs> so uh, are you doing this subtly or are you like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I'm not focused on my boyfriend at all, but like. <laughs> Uh, what's Jackson going to do to that? Ja well, I, I'm afraid this is out of character, but I feel like it, it uh, works for the interest of a sequel. Uh, Jackson is not super uh, interested in uh, Debbie's situation uh, in as much as he's not interested. Right. It's like, all right, that's hot. Um, but he's more interested in Noon and whether or not Noon is all right. And, oh, no! <laughs> and, what, and what Jackson wants to do is ask Noon uh, what's next. Basically, Jackson wants a partner now because Noon just got her whole ass hand cut off and then cauterized by black magic. Uh, and also, oh, like... <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it ain't natural! <laughs> I'll have you know it was called natural philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk by and like look at them as they're kissing, and like what's uh -huh. the what's the look? So what's the Jack, and keep in mind you are like where like right. Jackson walks by, fucked up jaw, and sees them making out, and and also makes eye contact with Debbie as she's seeing what he's doing, <laughs> and just as one of these like. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> and, then has, and then walks up to noon, and is and is and is like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get this fixed. You want, you want to come? I think we both need help. Yeah. Uh huh. Because Jackson wants to fight demons with a crystal weaver now. And uh, Professor, what are you doing? Is you're witnessing this exchange happen? Um, he rolls his eyes slightly, but uh, then um, steps forward. You all felt exceedingly well and have great determination. I invite you to come to the library archive in a few days' time, if you're still in town. And he'll, he'll turn and shoulder his, his cane. He's picked up the, uh, the outside part of it now, uh, and then twirl it and start walking away. I have no footage of that. Oh, that's OK. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. Nobody will notice. Um, <laughs> 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 As he puts the cane on, it's not only does it have its lid on, but there's actually no more blood on, on his uh, jacket anymore, and his hair is an inch longer. All right, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the professor leads the group into the sunrise toward uh hopefully medical attention and their future <laughs> adventures uh as they walk away we see this beautiful wide shot of them from behind the sun rising in the foreground uh it, and it's the professor sort of walking in the front uh next behind him is noon but next to noon is jackson and then we see chad and like chad is walking and and debbie is like rolling on her blades they're still making out and she's still looking at you like trying to see <laughs> <laughs> and this continues for about eight minutes as the credits roll. Um, the credits are particularly long because of all of the people who like are being given special thanks in this movie for like you loaning them. Everybody that loaned so much as a bottle of ketchup to the production is listed in the special thanks in the credit. This is a, this is a, this is a Kickstarter special thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, is the stunning conclusion of They Came From Beyond the Grave near dark on a frightening night. Great. Thank you. What a twist. <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> Actually ended uh, up with my boyfriend. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I would 100 percent expect a Jackson to figure out a way to leave Chad for dead and like get off set with Debbie. It's true. And yet when the option was pre presented, he just he walked right past. Chose name. <laughs> She's gonna remember that in the sequel. Just saying. She's gonna remember that in the sequel. But Jackson's all fucked up, and now it's like you know what? I ain't even trying to think. I can't even do nothing here. Uh, I gotta get my shit fixed. And, then I, <laughs> and now I gotta think also about like, all right, what's the next town? Because this town is tapped. I done did my thing. I almost fucked that waitress from that one roller derby. Uh, now it's time to move along. And at noon. <laughs> Noon really came Noon is out also disabled. Jackson. Let's go. <laughs> First of all, Noon is also disabled, but she also showed up for Jackson. She's just like, I just got rocks. That's all I got. <laughs> the reaction was completely different earlier. I feel like, really? Not even a magic rock? <laughs> well, you know, the heat of the moment. Uh, um, uh, uh, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, noon has magic rocks to do some things, and uh, Debbie is hot, and Jackson's going to leave town eventually. So there, at some point, there's a... You have rollerblades and a dope jawline, but that's it. <laughs> jawline than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I won this movie. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, winning the movie, uh, aspirations. Did anybody complete their short or long-term aspirations? Yeah. Did what I defend yeah. the world from the supernatural? You did. Long-term aspiration. Congratulations. I got uh, the scream in. You did. And so then I found, like, yeah, I rescued my boyfriend. So that's great. There you go. Aspirations I, for I, I made it to the credits. You did. Did I feel the show ever? Oh, that yeah. uh that uh getting bit and having like previously shot up with uh holy water. Yeah. It was pretty dope. Uh-huh. And then, oh, and then uh, I don't think and I had saved the day, but that was really a group. Was a, was you were part of the group that did that, so take a point. Yeah, that's true. All right, I'll take that. All right, noon. Uh, noon. I guess they definitely crystal whip somebody in the face. You did crystal whip somebody in the face. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Got it. Fair enough. You didn't die. There you go. All right. Mm -hmm. So since everybody achieved both short and long term aspirations, everybody gets two points from that, plus one point from each aspiration you completed. Um, 
and uh, feel free to save your characters. Who knows? Maybe there, maybe there is a sequel. Maybe there is a near dark and, and a frightening night too. Uh, we'll have to see what the numbers look like on opening weekend, and you know, um, see if maybe we can make sure everybody's you know adheres to their contracts. We might, you know, may may have to come back. Uh, I might possibly be available for a sequel. That's fair. That's fair. I'll have my I'll have my people call your people and they'll do lunch. Yeah. <laughs> At the moment, my people are the IRS. So just let them. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns? How our film went? Any uh, last thoughts as players stepping away from the as the the movie theater the end lights come up and now we're just a bunch of people playing a game again. Um, any any last uh, remarks or, or questions or uh, things that you that we didn't get to see that you would like to see or things that uh, you were, were weren't expecting that happened or anything like that? I had a lot of fun. I just Thank think I can really like visualize it in my head of like how it looks and like I don't know. I think it's great. Like I think it's better than most like horror movies I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, definitely watch it. If you like, this would be hell? fun to watch, no doubt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, any uh, any last thoughts, Pesto? Uh, no. I mean, you just never. Yeah, no. It was a lot of fun, and I hurt from laughing a lot. So I'm sorry, thanks for sorry that. about hurting your laughter, your funny bone, and uh, your hand. Uh, sorry. Uh, about Maybe in the I sequel you can have evil hand issues. Um, I, see, I imagined you having like the Anakin hand. Like yes. A robot like a robot. Hand. Yeah. Like an indie film type of robot hand. <laughs> <laughs> like a badly, a badly motion like track band patch of wire <laughs> that's on. Here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what were you saying, Simon? Sorry. Oh, I was saying, I was going to, uh, I had a post credits scene in mind that oh. would have. Well, uh, would have, uh, what would you like to what would you like to see in the post credit scene? Oh, uh, well, since uh, since it's also the only way for him to possibly uh, achieve one of his short term aspirations that remain uh, conceivably with player uh, interest and consent when he was trying to induct everyone into the cult, mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically uh, an Avengers post credit scene, but then like passing around a, an item from the archive to everybody. So I thought of uh, Quincy Morris's Bowie knife for Jackson. Um, what's his name? I think it's, I had it here. Uh, the, found, the creator of roller skating is John Joseph Merlin, created in 1735. Uh, and, you know, make some deal up about how the, the wood was, I don't know, part of the true cross or something like that. <laughs> um, and then uh, one of Joan of Arc's gauntlets studded with Madame Blavatsky's crystals as a, uh, a substitute hand. Nice. Right. Excellent. Yeah. So we, we, we get this scene of like, and there's not a whole lot of dialogue in it. Uh, we just see him passing these things out, uh, you know, telling each of you what it is as he gives them to you. And then you say, well, what, and Jackson's like, well, what, what about Noon? I saw her come in. And Noon, like, walks out and, like, tightens the strap on the gauntlet. And what do you say as it moves? <laughs> <laughs> Makes the snap and half the <laughs> Excellent. And we cut on her saying groovy. And I feel like Newton might be a different character in the in the sequel. Um, <laughs> I just want you to remember that Ashley J. Williams was extremely quiet, reserved, and uh, not a very big, you know, fighter in the original Evil Dead film. And then by Army of Darkness was a very different. So I'm waiting to see Noon in the past. Like that's our that see that was our mid credit scene. Our post credit scene uh, is Noon and the truck fall through a hole. She gets up. There's like zombies and a dragon. She pulls her shotgun off her back. <laughs> and just lifts, 
<laughs> looked right in the camera and goes, give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and the final scene is Sam Raimi's lawyers handing a right. service to <laughs> a cease and desist order from uh, oh, my face hurts from laughing as well. So um well, on that bright, shiny note, uh, Mel, did you have anything else that you wanted to add before we uh, do our wrap-up? I just loved this. I love the mechanics of this. I love that the mechanics fit into, like, movie magic ridiculousness, right? Uh, I love that I can call on some movie magic ridiculousness mechanics. Uh, I'm fairly new to tabletop in general. Like, not really, but I'm not, I don't, the rules are not something that I like. Uh, and so this is real, like, straightforward dice rules, which I like, uh, and some ridiculous movie trope rules, which were so fun. Like, this game, <laughs> like, and, and also, you got a break. You got a break from your initial character to do like like off scene stuff. Like I'm not Jackson right now. I'm the character. I'm the actor playing Jackson. Right. I had to have a little dialogue and give myself a little break, and then move back into the thing. This this is so much fun. This is great. I had an excellent time. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And yes, uh, this is a ton of fun. I want to uh, make sure to remind everyone that uh, They Came From Beyond the Grave is available uh, at Drive Through RPG and Print On Demand and PDF. It's available at your friendly local game store. Uh, just go in and tell them you want a copy of They Came uh, From Beyond the Grave. I also want to remind you that uh, the supplement uh, that came from Camp Murder Lake is also available now in uh, POD and PDF, uh, which focuses on slasher films specifically um, with new archetypes, new tropes, uh, completely focused on on slasher film, so pick those both up. Uh, if you've been watching the Story Path Showcase, you will see we just finished up. Uh, they came from Camp Murder Lake uh, with our our, our three part Family Matters. Um, it was so fun. We had uh, Redneck Cannibals and uh, Evil Little Girl. Those were our antagonists. So as you can imagine, I had a blast with that. Um, so. Maybe we'll have a crossover one day sequel with the survivors of both or something. We'll see. Um, there's a lot of cinematic fun to be had, though. You can also pick up They Came From Beneath the Sea if you want uh, some nice uh, 1950s sci-fi movie monster magic. Uh, and I believe by the time this airs, uh, I hope by the time this airs, the um, Beach Bunny uh, Tasty Bit should be out for uh, They Came From Beneath the Sea as well, which I had the honor and pleasure of working on. Uh, and fits in great with the They Came From the Beneath the Sea jumpstart. Now that I've paid all the bills, uh, let's start things off with, uh, uh, with Debbie, Debbie the Dupe. Please uh, tell us who you are, what you do, who you've been playing, your pronouns, their pronouns, and anything you would like to promote. Well, I'm Haley, known as Beyblade666. I'm on Instagram, TikTok. I played Debbie the Dupe. I had a really fun time. One of my first like storyteller games, and I just really enjoyed it. And I definitely want to play more and maybe host more. Um, Absolutely. To promote. Well, yeah, I got my Instagram and stuff, but I'm also on uh, Vancouver by Night's channel, uh, the Changeling game, Toronto by Day. I'll soon be on. Um, different channel not quite sure the name yet but it's going to be shadows over salem vtm game vampire the masquerade and i'll be on neon gore um which is a mage the ascension game so i'm pretty stoked for that That's all awesome. that will be on my instagram i'm sure promoting all that kind of stuff yeah so definitely head over and follow that instagram yeah. uh next up we have <laughs> pesto please give us your pertinence that's awesome. Hey, I am pessimistic and I do Twitch very rarely and I Twitter and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, this was, oh gosh, this was a lot of fun. I'm excited. I'm so glad that I get to walk away with awesome memories of like Debbie trying to go down the stairs in her rollerblades, Jackson flashing a vampire and, uh, the professor just grumbling like, uh, my religion gets to kill people. Like <laughs> it's just so many <laughs> awesome things. And I absolutely love, love, love this cast. And thank you all so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, next up, Professor, please give us your pertinence. Uh, my name is Simon. I am 
played the professor, uh, Dr. Leopold Agrippa von Lettersheim. Uh, both of us are he in. Um, the, I guess I'll promote, uh, I have a tabletop review blog, uh, the Tabletop Almanac at www.thetabletopalmanac.wordpress.com uh, and can also be found on Twitter at Tabletop Almanac. And I also host the Mage of the Ascension 20th Anniversary Introductory uh, series on the Onyx Path Twitch channel, the second and fourth Wednesday of the month called Walking Into Shadow. Excellent. Definitely check out Walking Into Shadow. It's a lot of fun and informative. You can learn things while you're having a good time. Uh, last but most certainly not least, Malachi, please uh, regale us with your tale. My tale is my name is Malachi Hoskins. Uh, he, they, uh, at Malachi Hoskins on Instagram, if you're into poetry, if you want to see me talk shit on the internet, I'm at malicious underscore nomenclature on TikTok. Uh, I've started going live. Twitch is a possibility in the future. And anytime Travis asks me to do anything for Onyx Bath, I say yes. Uh, and so that's my thing. And I appreciate it. And Onyx Bath appreciates it. Um, I guess that leaves me. I'm Travis. He, him, they all fine by me. Uh, when I'm not running games, I'm writing them. Um, the next time you'll see me, I am fuzzy on when this airs, but you will see me on the first, fifth, first third, and fifth Wednesday of every month uh, as we complete Scarred Lands, Dead Man's Rust. They're about two-thirds of the way through the campaign at the time of this taping, and shit has gotten real. Um, so please uh, check that out uh, if you want to see me torture some uh, D&D players. Um, other than that... Uh, just uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Uh, donate to Planned Parenthood and wash your hands. And uh, we'll see you again real soon.